From the time I decided to get a golden doodle puppy to the time I actually got Sophie, two years had passed. Meanwhile, I created some expectations about what having a golden doodle dog would be like. Despite doing a lot of research about puppy raising, the reality of having an actual puppy, this specific dog, was quite different to what I anticipated. In this video, I'll share some of my most challenging experiences of Sophie as a puppy and the journey to understanding and maturation that got us to where we are today. In other words, why I'm super relieved she's now an adult. Hi, I'm Joanna and here is Sophie and this is my Golden Doodle Diary. I make videos about Golden Doodle Dogs, also known as Groodles. If you're fascinated by this breed too, consider subscribing. It makes a big, big difference. And if you're seeing value in this video, leave us a like. I never knew I even wanted a dog until the day I was looking at a cafe menu and felt a tentative wet nose sniffing my leg. I turned around and saw my first Golden Doodle dog. I instantly knew that not only did I now want a dog, I wanted a dog just like that one. Aside from being beautiful looking, it was very sweet and gentle. As you do, I asked the owner what kind of dog it is. When he told me it's a Golden Retriever and Poodle mix, I remember thinking what a genius combination that is just like sugar and spice. So afterwards, I looked up this breed online and found that golden doodles are often used as therapy dogs. I thought, yes, I'd like a sweet, gentle, polite dog just like that. Little did I know it would later take my own dog more than a couple of years to mature enough to be similar to that dog. So fast forward to me recently creating the Golden Doodle Diary on YouTube. I've been filming video after video with Sophie lying down calmly and contentedly on my lap, just like this. Recently, somebody jokingly asked me if I sedate Sophie to do this. What they meant is they're used to Doodles being far more energetic than she looks to be. I just smile remembering the whole journey to adulthood. To get a fuller picture, let's back the track to when Sophie was a puppy, because me from back then would have thought that this current scene just wouldn't happen. The fact is, Sophie was not an easy puppy. Her puppyhood was a pretty intense period and to my surprise, at times quite stressful. I'll also emphasise that this is just my story about Sophie and I'm focusing only on the challenging parts in this video, which is not to downgrade lots and lots of really beautiful moments, which I wouldn't trade for anything. But I do hear of others being stressed and overwhelmed at times by their golden doodle pups. So if that's you, then I hope that hearing some of what I went through, we went through, before getting to the other side of it will be helpful to you. When she was a pup, there was no way Sophie would snuggle up to me like this. Other Golden Doodle puppy owners managed to get those cuddly puppies, but that just wasn't Sophie. She was curious about her environment, very clever, confident and friendly. She liked being near me and interacting with me, just not cuddling. When it was time to nap, she would just go off and snooze on her own. It was only when she got to about two years old that she began to snuggle like this. It also happened to coincide with cold weather. Understandably, she wouldn't have wanted shared body heat when it was hot. I never really saw Sophie being submissive, but my goodness, she was a highly strung puppy. It didn't make sense to me she could sometimes be so confident and other times so anxious. I did spend lots of time teaching her commands to stimulate her mind. I also exercised her every day so she can drain her energy. I was also mindful to be calm around her so that she would hopefully take on a bit of that calmness. Despite all this, she would often get very excited and very vocal. One time a friend popped around for maybe about 15 minutes and Sophie was super excited, like a, a happy excitement, not a scared excitement. And she barked and barked the whole time he was over. It's like she didn't have an off switch. I soon found that Sophie wanted to have me near her all the time. At the beginning, I spent the first few nights sleeping downstairs with her while she got settled in at our house. But the time came when I had to go back up to my room at night. And that was a battle of the wheels because she'd use her voice just like a weapon, barking, not just a little bit, but for hours. 
I didn't want to give in because that would have given her the signal that if she barked hard enough, then she'll get what she wants. Seriously, she'll just rile herself up more and more and get herself into a complete state. One of those crazy nights when Sophie was barking the house down, Simon actually went to the garage to sleep in his car. Thankfully, she stopped making a fuss about me sleeping upstairs after a few days, but she had a lot of separation anxiety when she was left alone in the house, and that took much longer to train her out of. So yes, separation anxiety was the single biggest challenge I had with Sophie. It wasn't until she was well over a year old that it began to subside, and that's me trying out different methods. I'll make another video talking about the separation anxiety side of things, but for now I just wanted to let you know that it's something I struggled with and did manage to overcome. I'll also add that Sophie did very well at puppy school and actually got top of her class for all the commands she rapidly learnt and followed. But even in that same puppy school, I sometimes had to take her outside whenever her excitable barking got excessive. As time passed, I got to know her better and worked out how she really ticks and came to accept her limitations. What I figured is that she is naturally highly sensitive to her environment. She's alert to things that another dog would ignore, and that's just how she's wired, so to speak. If she's in a highly stimulating environment, her brain tends to go into hyperdrive. She still barks at faraway things, but it's about 90% less than before, so it's manageable. I don't think she'll ever be a complete non-barker. I don't think she'll ever enjoy being left on her own, but the important thing is she's now okay with it. Which brings me to the biggest thing I hadn't expected, and that is the degree to which you can bond with and love a dog, despite any of these challenges. My patience grew, my powers of observation were honed, and I worked things out, and I eventually got my perfect dog, just not in the way I expected. These days, Sophie is still social, but certain situations, especially when there are lots of dogs around, get her brain hyper-stimulated. So I know to just observe her, and if it's too much, to remove her from the situation. If you see my video about Golden Doodle Care 101, one of the points I make is to recognise that each dog is unique in terms of its needs, what it responds to and how it learns. Sophie is a little joy maker. She met hundreds of people and dogs and made many people smile. And in her own unofficial way, she's something of a freelance therapy dog spreading her sunshine. And because of the challenges, I think that along the way, she's actually made me a better person. Thanks for watching and see you next time.